I'm Jessica Heasley. I'm the editor of Event Marketer Magazine, and welcome to EM Chat. Uh, in just a minute, we'll get started with today's chat on the five lessons that every woman in event marketing should know. But before we get started, we'd like to take a few minutes to introduce you to today's sponsor. Today's chat is sponsored by our friends at Sparks, a leading global event and trade show agency. Many of you know that for the past three years, Sparks has been producing a very active and well-received Women in Events educational series that includes a master class at the Event Marketing Summit, regional workshops across the country, as well as numerous research, insights, and content pieces for this industry's professional women. If you are not currently involved in the initiatives you just heard about, we encourage you to visit their website at women-em.com. Again, that is women-em.com and sign up. Once again, thank you to our friends at Sparks for supporting today's conversation. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our industry experts for today's chat. Alex Tapiz is the Director of Sales, Partner Engagement, and Recognition at Cisco. And Colleen McKenna is the former Director of Global Marketing at Symantec. Welcome, Alex and Colleen. And we're going to kick off the conversation with Alex. Alex? Once we give you the uh, power here, we'll let you take it away. Yes. Thanks, Jessica. Hi, Alex. Hello, guys. Hi, Colleen. Hello. Okay, let me share my screen and bring my uh, slide. Here we go. Hopefully, you guys are seeing my slides now. We do. Great. So, um, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, good morning and good afternoon for all of you joining us. It's a pleasure to be here today with you and uh, joining Colleen on uh, on this chat. Thanks, Event Marketer, for uh, organizing this and, and the invitation. Um, I want to share with you just a few slides just to kind of kick things off, and uh, and then I think the real uh, fun will begin when we do Q&A. So I'm going to be very brief. But I will kind of preface by saying that what I will share with you today are very personal beliefs, and, and, and I've kind of been using a bit of that belief system in my career over the years. So these are kind of guiding points for me. So you may not agree with them, but they have been uh, very close to my heart, and I've been kind of using them as a, as a, as a guiding point as I, as I go in my career. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why we lead the industry today, and uh, and then kind of think a little bit about our industry, and then in general about our career. So let's start with um, things that I've discovered very early on that were skills that I had and that they were critical to my success in, in this business. And um, I may be making a, a bit of a... a uh, generalization here, but I do believe that these uh, tend to be characteristics that uh, women um, have m more than, than our, our male counterparts. So, but again, we'll start with agility and speed and this ability to juggle many projects at once. I think even if you are new to the industry and you're just uh, uh, starting your career, you probably know by now that the, the, the field we live in, the world of events, it is really all about multitasking. Um, and I think we do have the ability, men tend to be a bit more linear and sequential thinkers while we actually thrive in opportunities where we are dividing our attention in, in multiple areas. Um, the other thing I would say that has been very critical for me is really around this ability to listen and the sensibility into how we listen. And this is critical because when you look at audience care about, and as you move through your career, you know, I've been in IT for 20 years, and so I've been kind of working with the same audience type. But for those of you that are moving within industries, um, the ability for you to know your audience is very critical to your success. And I think women have more empathy when we when we listen and when we heard. And this is not just about looking at focus groups and survey results, but really listening and understanding audience care about and audience needs. I find myself really being able to get more creative and more focused when I think about 
what kind of problem or what kind of need I'm trying to fulfill with my audience. My third topic is really about what women should know about our industry. Um, our industry has been in a transformation period, and I think this we've been talking about this transformation for the last decade, but I think it's, it's, very, it's still very current. I think um, I continue to think about the investment that continues to grow in the area, uh, in, the, the, in our field, in event marketing in general, and more budgets being transferred from general marketing expenditures and more into this kind of face-to-face -face, um, uh, or virtual events. Um, a, another big thing for us, or for me personally, but also for the team that I lead here at Cisco, uh, is really around this idea that all events are hybrid experiences. Maybe even two, three years ago, we would say, "Oh, I'm running a live event, or I'm running, I'm running a fully uh, virtual event." And I think that's all out the window. I think all events are hybrid experience, and we're seeing more and more of these two worlds coming together. So you have to be able to dance both songs, and you need to be able to speak about those hybrid experiences with the same comfort level we've had with, you know, running live events for so long. Um, and one thing that I spoke about during my interview for the, the magazine, which is more about the responsibility that I take uh, when I am running programs here at Cisco, I know that these events are, these experiences are the moments where the brand, the Cisco brand, is the closest to its stakeholders. And, and I don't take that lightly. That is a, a fantastic uh, place to be, and, uh, you know, we are in the business of designing these experiences and creating these memories between our stakeholders and our brand, and, and that is a responsibility that I bring to work every day. Um, fourth point, very briefly, it's really about having a point of view. Um, I think with some of what Cheryl Sandberg's book uh, brought to the table with this idea of having a seat at the table. Um, I spoke a little bit about this concept of I think it's easier to get a seat at the table. Obviously, you have to to seek that place. But most important, once you get at the table, you need to have a point of view. So do your homework and be prepared to craft your vision statement, not just what you bring to the table, but what your organization your events team bring to your company. Um, and, and again, when you are at the table, make sure that your voice is heard and that your point of view is shared. That's really what's going to move you to the next level. And lastly, this is, uh, this is again, a very important pr principle of mine has been around this idea of pay it forward. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I always think about my first break. I think about the people that were involved in giving me my first chance when I was just, you know, very young, but very passionate about uh, uh, my career, but quite didn't really have, you know, the experience and, and the skills there. And someone believed that, that I had what it, what it would take eventually. And so I think about that, and I think about how do I give back now? How, can I be that person? that gives someone else that first break. So I do personally spend a lot of time mentoring and sharing um, my experience and learnings with others. So um, hopefully you can help bring the next generation of female leaders within our industry and, and kind of do your part. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's it for me, Jessica. Okay, thank you, Alex. And uh, we'll just pass the torch here to Colleen. I'll just take a break. Thank you so much, Alex. And thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, I'm just so thrilled to be here and be a part of um, Event Marketers' event. And the article, I thought it was just really interesting to um, have um, a whole feature really focused on, on the issues uh, that we as women face in the industry today. Um, I... I try to think about the things I actually didn't touch on in the article that I wish I would have and uh, wanted to share with you today. They are 
the first one's really sort of more personal in nature, but I, I think it's something that many of us, especially when we're starting out in this industry, don't really consider, is that this job is crazy. It is not a nine-to-five job. As I mentioned, we're not dentists, we're not accountants. There's something about us that's attracted to the excitement of, of the vet marketing, um, the ups and downs, the pace. It's exciting. It's wonderful. But could it also really drain us unless we really think about how to take care of ourselves as people when we're on the down, when we have downtime. So I just wanted to remind us all that, you know, it's not a nine to five gig. And the best way for us to be as productive as possible when we're doing our jobs is to know that when um, we come off the high of the event, that we really need to recharge our batteries to get organized professionally and personally. And to know that's okay, that it doesn't have to always be a 24-7 gig, because it often to me seems that way when you're in the middle of, of planning an event. I personally love the cycle of this type of job where you have the creative process in the beginning and pulling together ideas and then really, you know, culminating in that big event that just takes so much of our time and energy. It also made me think that as, you know, our lives progress and we have children and, and whatnot, that it's just so important to have um, a real support system around us in order to be successful and it, that it's okay to do that. Um, you know, this isn't something that was really spoken about a lot back, you know, 25 years ago when I started in the industry, but I did have a support system and it has just meant uh, the world of difference to me as far as being successful and being able to really be fully present when I am in, um, in that mode of my job. Because as I said, it, it will get crazy again and this is what we love about this, this profession. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on that I, that I don't think I touched on in the article as well, and I really think this is so important. Um, many of you on this on this chat are probably from the agency side, and uh, here's a funny little picture of me from an event we did in New York um, at Ground Central Terminal uh, launching um, the Cybercrime Index uh, when I was at Symantec. And uh, this whole event was put on by our agency called HNX, as well in London uh, with our partner called um, the Circle Agency, and it just makes me think how important it is to really pick your partners well. Um, especially on the corporate side where I come from, there's just no possible way for us to be uh, fully successful without our partners. We don't have the experience and expertise in every facet of the hybrid marketing event, as Alex mentioned. I mean, there are just so many components to any kind of event these days, and there's just no such thing as um, one specific kind of event. They are all hybrid. And to pick the best people and the best partners, and the, the, the folks that I've been working with recently are also the people I've been working with for the past maybe past 10, 15 years. Um, you know, I, I tend to find the very best people and follow them and keep them close to me throughout the years. Um, they are the people I can collaborate with and I really enjoy working with because that's really important. And I have built these comfortable relationships with and I know they're going to deliver. Um, and just the last thing is, you know, um, just on measurement and KPIs, um, sometimes on my teams that, that I've been on, you know, the focus is so much on the event itself um, and how exciting and successful it is, whether it's, um, a, a, you know, a small media event where we're inviting, you know, media up to a suite and creating an event for them or, you know, a full-blown experiential event like the one I just um, showed you from New York. Um, everybody has, everybody in the company has a different um, view of what success is, and I have just found that really gaining, um, not consensus, but just an understanding of what those KPIs are and getting them all um, in front of everyone in advance of the event um, just makes really all the world of difference on how that event is viewed um, in the end as being su as successful. So, you know, as Alex mentioned with the hybrid event, there's the social component, you know, web visits, um, application downloads, the PR portion, how many people stop by, what are the sales leads, there's just so many. And to have those KPIs um, really understood by all your key stakeholders in advance is just critical. Um, you know, gone are the days where the event was just cool and a lot of people showed up and there's, you know, buzz about the event. You've got to really have all of those other uh, KPIs um, laid out in advance. So. Um, that is that is it. Thank you, Colleen. Before we go, we'd like to give one more shout out to today's sponsor, leading at global event and trade show agency Sparks. Sparks has some terrific resources designed just for women in events, 
And we encourage you all to visit their website at women-em.com to check it out and sign up. Uh, our special thanks once again to Alex Batiz and Colleen McKenna. And thank you all for joining us with joining us and chatting with us today. We will see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.